Big so, shout out to Bean Working Espresso down in Skyring Terrace, Newstead. Best Hook, coffee in the game. Best absolute coffee in the game. Hooking the platform podcast and any listeners up with a 10% discount. Shout out. Shout out to Yol- Yolanda. Yolanda. That was a mouthful. Their coffee's real fucking good. Get best it. coffee in the game by far. Just opened up Skyring Terrace. You can order ahead and mention the platform podcast for a 10% discount. Be bad and Brandon. We're on. On. You don't need to hide the beer, bro. It's fine. Is that right? Yeah, dude. Beers are on, baby. You're on holidays. Let's get it done. Sweet. What have you been doing today? Cutting away. Cutting yeah. away. Yeah. Is doing that, some cuts. Is that what it's called in the, the trade? Mm. In the craft? Yeah. That's the Cutting things. Cutting shapes, mate. Cutting shapes. Cutting shapes. Yeah. Could you Throw cut shapes? Shade. Yeah, done a few. Really? Yeah. Could you put shapes in my head? Yeah, we've done plenty of things with your head, Johnny. We'll do plenty more, man. <laughs> now, given the context for those Always people listening, I feel like we need to just explain that we are currently talking to a shape cutter. A shape cutter, also known as what the fuck is your? Lo- is this actually on? Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> <laughs> we started a while ago. That's gold. What's awesome. um? Oh yeah, we 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 put everything out too. What's uh? What's your last name again? Reed. Reed. That's right. Yeah. Co- I was like. I know, I literally thought it was Co for a second there. Ryan Mate. Reed of Ryan and Co Barbershop. I yep. genuinely thought your last name was N Co for a second. Mate, you can you can go with that. That's makes it easy. Yeah, uh, can you be can you just change your name legally for me to I call him Arco. Arco. You call him yeah. what? Arco. Arco, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Nice now, and easy, nice and short. Yeah. Now you are the Da Vinci of the barber world. Mm. Yeah. The well, standard. Ryan K standard. No, you are the standard. Yeah. Like you're the you best. You boys are part of the standard as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, like we we frequent your your barber shop. Mm. Yep. Uh, Johnny, I think, is on a fortnightly routine. You're on two weeks here. Yeah, that's two weekly. Yep. Obviously, to mold that beautiful, I wouldn't say beautiful. Tame, keep it under control. Exactly. Um, he's a, yeah. He is an artist. I am his muse. You know what, mate? You G me up when you say that. Most times you come in at the end of the cut, you're an artist, and it gives me that little... <laughs> oh, yeah. Vibe. But it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been lucky enough to be a monthly, and but more recently a, a fortnightly, just due to some events. That it's been came. good, mate. I'm it, trying I've to wrangle you in. Yeah, oh, fuck. How good was that game last weekend? Cracking. It right. was good. Are you pumped for tomorrow? I am. Yeah, it's... Uh, Do you see the Panthers getting up? I think they can. How? How are they going to I, do um, Johnny's written him off, but hey, you're he hasn't watched any footy since uh, the <laughs> since, regular since, season since the Broncos finished up. Good. <laughs> Johnny's <laughs> one of those uh, 99% of Broncos supporters that just throw one in the bus and <laughs> stop watching later. footy as yeah. soon as they're out. So, uh, Yeah, no, I give them a good chance, mate. I, I think, think they uh, have a chance, but they need to take it to Storm early. Yeah. Every time Storm's caught out, uh, like all been caught out, is when the opposing teams start early. And Panthers have the ability. Yeah. Like, they've got Cleary. Kick out's back, which is always a big G. Yeah. Big G up for the team. Yeah. Um, I'm keen yep. to see Brian Toe and J- Josh Adokago head Just to head. go at it. Yeah. Mate, there's, like, good matchups all over the park. It's going to be a fucking good game. Um, but, yeah, like you say, if they stick with them, they'll definitely they'll give lose themselves by 10. Every, every chance. I don't know if they will win. you buy me porkies. Johnny, <laughs> how many porkies have I taken off you just this year alone? Th- this is different. Have we got a porkies on it already? Yes, we do. Sweet. We are confirmed. Porkies. And then we've confirmed all three origins. Correct. Porkies Monday. as well. Yes. Sweet. Porkies is a well tradable 20. commodity. Uh, I feel, <laughs> I, I'm starting to feel bad, actually. Uh, I think if we were to tally up all the porkies purchased, I would be in front. You'd be in arrears, I'd imagine. No, mate. I'm going to get started with Ryan here. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, <laughs> fuck with Johnny too much, though, because he, he does train me. <laughs> that's, weekly, yeah, that's also very fair. So. But then you could fuck his hair up. Yeah, but so I'm it's... Cool it. yeah, we've got a bit of a love-hate thing going on. Yeah, but imagine if he shaved your mullet. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, okay. Sha- speaking of shaving, I know we couldn't convince you into uh, the... No, November I need this, unfortunately, for a few things coming. No, that's cool. It's a glory. And look, I would miss stroking my hands through it every, every two, you know two many- weekly now. Three, three weekly. Well, I've we'll got, get him on the two weeklies, Johnny. We, we will eventually get there. I just, I do love... Oh, okay. we, we need to get this actual podcast started because I could just rave about you forever. Mm. But like, we have started. 
now we'll start officially. We will start officially. So we haven't even started. No, we have started. No, but this is this start. is all content. So but this That's is started. like now the because uh, we have a a loose yeah, run sheet know. format. Format's a good word. Loose format. Yeah. Uh, I just hurt my shoulder. Fuck. Careful, shoulder. Yeah. Buddy. Um, yeah. No, oh, I've been okay. waiting. I've been waiting for the brief to come through all week. Or the you um, didn't get it. Yeah, we no. sent it to you, and then I thought, you know pigeon. what? I'm better off without a, a brief anyway. Correct. No, Just we sent it via carrier pigeon. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah right. I'm in turn. I missed it. Yeah. Uh, so we're free falling. So as you know, 21 words. Who you are and what you do. Brandon counts them. You Roughly. say them. I sit <laughs> back and watch it. All right. I've been looking forward to this part. Are you, you ready? <coughs> All he's sounds. Count. All sounds. sounds. Absolutely buddy. not. All right. So when, I, when I say go. Okay. Ready? Go. Barber from the Sunshine Coast. Own and operate Ryan Co Barbershop. Love cutting hair. You're at 13. 14. Keep them coming, baby. And making the great humans. Your two words look fresh. Say that. Look fresh. Boom! Thank you. I was going to say something about Brisbane, but you helped me out there, Brando. Got your back. I, was I, I felt the anxiety well, that I, I feel like, like I, I need to, 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 to give you knuckles. Yeah, too, I'll take mate, one. Thanks. I had it. to jump I'll in there because I felt your anxiety and I didn't want that. I you saved you. me, mate. It was, I got you, boo. I the, got you. The, the room was closing. It was, <laughs> was it looking small? <laughs> it was, mate. The rain in the background, that was kind of keeping me We'd definitely chill, sum up you've been excited and looking forward to uh, what's happening today. You wouldn't say you've been nervous or anxious at all? Uh, mixed emotions, <laughs> mate. I don't know how I've felt. There's been uh, a little bit of excitement, a little bit of nerves. Well, that could be the same thing. The Never same. been on a podcast before. Don't watch too many of them, but... Oh, mate, Here we are, we are honoured to have you on. Yeah. As I said, you are the Da Vinci of Barbershop World. Artist's pleasure. Yeah. Artist. The standard. The Artist. standard. Mm. You have a... Now, for anyone who's listening or anyone who follows my own Instagram, you would have seen recently that I fell asleep while getting a haircut. Yeah. And that's what I love the most. You don't even try and wake me up. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. Does that make it an easier head to cut when it's in a sleep head? As long as the head's not moving around. And, yeah. Yeah. It still head's a good head. I yeah. Had a good 40 minute For tip sure. while I was there. My watch fucking told me. I felt it in your energy when you came in that day that you I were, was so you were, tired. You were tired, mate. <laughs> yeah. I catch you usually at, uh, I believe, the sort of. The Thursday after the night of big squats, I'm a bit exhausted. I roll in. As soon as Ryan washes my hair, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's, gonna it's always a, a nice quick catch up at the beginning and then I just let you be, mate. I know. It's you, go really into nice. a, you go into a really sacred place. It's good to it's watch. It's a beautiful time. But thankfully, you don't fuck with me either when, you, yeah. when I do that. Dude, I've been tempted. You have a little fun with that. Mm. Well, nothing permanent, but look, you have a little giggle on that one, I think. Yeah. That's why, I, I don't know if you notice, I spin the chair around sometimes. <laughs> just so you can, you know... That not see me. what's going on all the time. That scares me. Now. Well, no, you, you have, have mirrors sleep. on There's the other side. There's a lot of trust, bro. There's a lot of trust. There is there. a lot of trust. Yeah, you got a razor mm. on their neck. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Meanwhile, a... Johnny, like, you can't shut him up. He's in there chatting away the whole time. I don't think Johnny would ever fall asleep. I don't know if Johnny chair. can fall asleep with the amount of caffeine ingested in a day. What yeah. a sleep. Runs hot. He does. Runs very hot. But now, to you. You're a barber. Yeah. And how long have you been practice? Is that practice? Is that the do word? you practice that? Or do you do it? Sounds, sounds pretty professional. Yeah, you I are professional. Know. You run your own business. Yeah. And very nice. Barbershop. Yeah. Um, yeah, practice. How long have you been practicing? Operate. For? Operate? Um, Cut hair? I've been cutting. I've been in the industry for 13 years now. Jeez. Jeez. You're not so that old too. 30, yeah. Yeah, so 30. Are you 30? Yeah. Shit, dude. I thought you were younger. Yeah, no. Thanks, Brando. I thought hit you were the, my age. Hit the 30s club this year. Uh, February. Well, How old are you, 10, dude? 20, 27. 27. I thought you were 27. Wow, I thought you were my age. <laughs> <laughs> That's Damn. what I get a lot of, though. I purposely grew this to be that. Yeah. Nah, you carry it well, So mate. you start straight out of high school, then. It must be 17. Uh, yeah, whilst at high school. Whilst at high school? Yeah. Wow. So school-based apprentice in yep. year 10, I started. And then... Um, what drew you to it, man? I uh, fell in it. Fell really? into it, yeah. Because if um, I was to say, you know, my, like, it's probably not a typical trade chosen... Um, in particularly when you start off as a hairdresser yeah. as well. Oh, well, did you start oh, you as a hairdresser? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So so mo most kids in that lane are probably thinking carpentry, um, yeah. electrician, especially, plumber. Yep. Especially where I grew up boy on the coast, coast. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was definitely um, a bit off the beaten track. Yep. Um, all my mates were doing trades of, you know, the standard. 
Yep. So yeah, sparkies and builders and all that. But yeah, I had um, a family hair dresser who used to look after um, all my family. And uh, she just mentioned one day you should come give hairdressing a crack. And it was as surprising as it probably sounds now as it, it was back then. So um, yeah, she, she gave me a shot at just like coming in, sweeping the floors after yep. school. Uh, working on the weekends, they called it a tea and tidy back then. So you just made coffee, tea, a tea and tidy, washed, washed hair, cleaned up. Yep. So decent job to be honest in yep. year ten. Yeah, I bet. And then that sort of went good into good looking rung rooster like yourself running around the old uh, hairdressing coast. shop in the sunny mm. coast would have been quite popular, I imagine too. Yeah, it was. Um, it was a lot better than. Uh, it sounded a lot better than being on a job site. That's for sure. So <laughs> keep the hands a bit, a bit cleaner. <laughs> yeah. Fucking oath. But yeah, the year that was year ten, so he started off as a hair, um, just an apprentice, an apprentice, yeah, yeah. school based apprentice, uh, one day a week. So, and then um, yeah, the year eleven, the first year eleven report card came in, and it wasn't too good. <laughs> was it, wasn't the greatest. So it wasn't great at all. <coughs> and then and, you just uh, decided to go full all in. Yeah, well, after the first semester year year, uh, year eleven, my dad tapped me on the shoulder and said. Mm. Have you thought about maybe just going into the workforce full time? <laughs> so, which, you know, at the time was pretty, I wanted to finish school and yeah. go through with your mates and yeah. go to schoolies and things like that. Thinking about schoolies at the start of year 11 was probably a pretty good indicator that school wasn't... Uh, For you. Wasn't <laughs> a priority. <laughs> yeah. So... It's, it's almost like that for most... You know, I look at someone like yourself who is quite, I believe, successful in what they do and... You know, you're on a really sick fucking barbershop here in Fortitude Valley. It's like, I hated school, man. I, I can't imagine Johnny being a, a... Did you like school? I was not an academic. No. <laughs> and it's it's almost like the people who don't do necessarily well in school, they usually start their own thing. That's how I've seen it or looked yeah. at it. So I just fucking... I hated school, man. Yeah. I was no, the same. If I, I, was, the yeah, only reason I shopping. saved was to play rugby, man. Yeah. So would you yeah. say you pretty much dive straight into it? That, that was a no-brainer then if you're already doing 10 tidies yeah, well, to jump into a, a full-time apprentice? I think at the time it was just something. It like I didn't want to go be a sparky or mm. do any other trade. Obviously, wasn't going to go down the uni academic lane. So it was just something to dive into. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's like here I am 13 years because later, I'm still doing it. Um, Almost, th you'd be thankful for the old man for giving you that little push. Yeah, for sure. Um, pretty much. Yeah, you'd probably only work that out later on in life. Yeah, yeah at the time. Though. Yeah, at the time, I was like, oh, you're a dick. <laughs> you're not going to let me, because I had my older brother who went through to year 12 and didn't really do too much for school. Yeah. So he'd probably seen him waste a couple of years. Yep. So if you look at it now, I'd be two years back from where I was if yeah. I didn't get gave into the workforce. Gave you a head so, start almost. Yeah, exactly. So, and hairdressing's one of them, same as you boys, like, working in the industry you work in where you interact with people mm. every day it's taught me so much just on that level you sort of talk to people every day and that that sort of is what i warmed to straight away as well it's like oh like i can learn through just talking to people from all mm. various different walks of life professions um so that's where i started learning from that environment yeah you know being around people absolutely how long does apprenticeship take to knock out for something like that four years it was for hairdressing yep. um so it's pretty four pretty long years when you're on an appre apprentice wage. Apprentice wage, grinding. Yeah, doing Do you colours. Your first haircut that you gave. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, is that man. A scary there's been moment? some shockers for sure. It was. Yeah, I've I've got mates that still remind me of how much I butchered them in those early days. Because so. <laughs> you'd be looking just for us, anyone to practice on, right? Yeah, that would happily sit there. You just you call them guinea pigs, mate. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a long road picking it up, especially when you you throw like colouring and you know perming and all that sort of stuff that yep. you do in a hairdressing apprenticeship. So, um, yeah, it was it was a bit of a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any photos of like the the old fucking? You got to have some. I want to so see there'd, this. There'd be some. Did you yeah. have some pretty rowdy haircuts yourself? Just fucking. I have, mate. Yeah, um, I've had all all colours, yes. most colours, most cuts. Could you yeah, so. obviously this has given you a pathway to travel overseas and you know you went to was it england yeah spent time in england cutting hair and yep sorry one real quick thing sorry hairdressing and barber are they two different 
like modalities almost. Yeah, so I'm actually still qualified as a hairdresser, but practice, okay. practice. Not as, as a qualified uh, barber. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, like through experience. Yep. I'd call myself, yeah, a barber or men's stylist. Yep. Well, um, being a barber apprenticeship, is that similar to a hairdressing? It's work? actually, you can do it. Um, you can fast track it into a six month course, which is just full time. Mm-hmm. Or if you do it at a shop, it's two years. So it's, yep. a, it's a fair bit shorter. They've actually changed hairdressing to three years now as well. Yep. So um, yeah, barbering just doesn't have that sort of science side of coloring and perming and things like that. So yep. it's a bit more. Your skill set's a little deeper. Yeah. Yeah. Which it's is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool and kind of differentiates, differentiates, whatever that fucking word is, yeah. from your other barbershops. Because like you can't, some of the stuff I've seen you do to Johnny's hair, and again, I've known Johnny for a while, there's been a few. Yeah. Like, you, I was like, oh, I didn't know Ryan could do that. But yeah, you're a hairdresser. So yeah. So qualified. Yep. Uh, my team, uh, Sean and Stacey as well, they're both um, hairdressers by trade. So yeah, sick. definitely gives you that bit more um, depth in your skill set. And, and in particular, your, your styling and, and scissor techniques. So it's definitely good to be able to have a, you know, be a hybrid between yeah. the barbering aspect and, and techniques and then having the hairdressing <coughs> knowledge and skill set as well. Because so it, it is a skill. Like yeah. what you, it's, I don't know, like anyone, I've spoken to you in the chair before, like passionate about haircutting. Yeah. And it's fucking unreal. Passionate about haircutting, but passionate about the, the relationship side of it as well. And that's what we were talking about last weekend, I think. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's just more than a haircut. Yeah. Especially like to you as a business owner, if you're just offering a haircut, well, you know, where else could you get a haircut? And yeah, you can get a decent haircut anywhere, but it's the relationship that you self build. Yeah. That, that keeps people coming back. Is that something that excited you from an early stage that you worked out that that was something that would be cool? You get an hour or maybe longer with hairdressing to sit with someone yeah. and just fucking find out about that human. Yeah, for sure. And just learn off them. <clears throat> yeah. It's, um, it's, it's a massive part mm. of what I enjoy with the trade and mm. what we do. Um, and I see a lot of similarities in, with how you guys operate as well mm. as coaches, the relationship mm. and the impact you have mm. on people. Uh, and then, yeah, just the access to, you know, knowledge, whether it be professionally that you're talking to someone or, or personally. Mm. Um, so, and that's what's, it's actually been awesome coming and getting coached by you, mate, and, and having that from the other side yeah. as well, like having that, uh, professional that looks after you and, you know, you get to have your time. Yeah, exactly. So that's, what's been pretty cool about having a coach or a PT yep. as well. So, but yeah, I've always seen a lot of similarity. I actually used to live with a PT back, um, sort of early twenties when I moved down to Brizzy. Mm. And we used to always just chat about the similarities that barbering and and personal training had. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, did you go to him for? A, did you, Johnny? Did you go to Ryan for a haircut, and then you started getting coaching, or did you mm. just? Yeah, so you just found him. Mate, I found through the great PJ. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Said you got to go to Ryan. Okay. There's a little PJ. He was he he didn't make it in today. PJ, I was I had him in the book. I was mm. gonna get a few. Bits of uh, words of podcast advice. Tips off podcast him. tips. <laughs> what do I do, PJ? Um, no, what a legend of a of a bloke. That's a prime example of mm. the relationships you get to meet. And from mm. PJ, you now know Johnny. From Johnny, yeah. like that's just a it's whole just network. The, the web yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's fucking sick, dude. What it was is. your your first gig coming out of apprenticeship? Uh, so I finished my apprenticeship. I actually ended up working at three different salons yeah. throughout that. Four so you weren't years. thinking barbering just yet. Barbering wasn't really a thing, bro. It was... Um, you pretty much had to go to a salon to get a haircut. Yeah, even as a lad. Like most guys back then still went to hair salons. Like, mm. there was a big gap between... There was still some old school, you know, daggy kind of barbershops. Mm. Probably not even your dad would go to. Maybe your granddad would go to. Yep, mm. yep. And then there was hair salons. Yep. So, and over the, over the course of doing my apprenticeship and becoming a um, qualified hairdresser, I'd sort of slowly built up a men's following anyway. Yep. Yep. Probably more so just through that conversation and attracting, yep. you know, that kind of following. Mm. It's a bit easier chatting to dudes than talking mm. to females all day, every day. Yep. Um, so, um, yeah, built up a bit of a following um, at probably three different salons that I worked at over the course of my yep. apprenticeship. And then um, from there, I actually moved down to Brizzy 2011 mm. with, yeah, um, 
that's when I was keen to get into barbershops or a modern barbershop. Yep. There was a couple in Brizzy at the time. Yep. Because yeah, uh, it wouldn't have, still wouldn't have been much then. Not even it? in Brizzy. Yeah, not even in the even city. Around, so. like, 2013, 2014, like your Jimmy Rods started coming, started through, coming through and um, Tommy Guns and shit like that. Yeah. They were just this like small ones that obviously have grown out yeah. now, but yeah, now there's sure. a lot more barbershops. It's, it's, it's been like pretty it's wild a, to see the growth in the industry and, yeah. and watching the, the stage. <clears throat> yeah, well, and, and you sort of seen stuff it overseas? From, was anything happening overseas in that sort of lane of barbershops back yeah. then? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that was that was kind of the moving to Brisbane was always going to be a stepping stone to move to London because I always had that desire to travel. But then yep. seeing uh, the opportunity that having a skill set like cutting hair mm. provided to be able to transfer it into traveling and working overseas. Yep. Um, so I always <coughs> sort of had London in mind yep. as a place to go and just travel, but also mm. elevate my career. Yeah, absolutely. Cutting hair uh, and Brisbane was just a stepping stone so I could get some high end sort of men's. Yep, cutting Tom, experience Tom in the chair. Learn my trade from yep. hairdressing into barbering or men's work, and then so yeah, I did two years uh, in Brisbane working at a, a salon or barber shop. It was actually a men's salon. That's the barber shop wasn't really a thing then. You didn't wow. even like even a brand wouldn't correlate like cheapen yeah their brand to barber shop at the time because barber shop was still had this facade like or this, this cheap sort of feel alliance with being cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That was definitely the best. It was probably one of the best men's salons um, in still Australia. Kicking around? Is it still kicking around? Actually, it just closed down uh-huh. with COVID and that, which is fairly surprising. But um, yeah, they they were going for it. Probably would have been coming up to fifteen years. So wow. had a good good I knock. Know. Mm. Yeah, and you're sort of drawing inspiration from the other guys working there, and they were sort of showing you the ropes a bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it was cool to go work for. Uh, I don't know how you guys have. Uh, been inspired or who you've looked at for inspiration over the time um, Brandon's my inspiration there you go so I was about to say the same thing but I didn't want to interrupt how him. good oh. how good <laughs> that's cute. cute do you want yeah. me to do you guys need a moment um, you've already had nah it. we're good we we'll have it. don't make me leave I want to see it <laughs> <laughs> well we can have that shower again like last week I guess well you want to jump into that I that's bought my that. towels that was, that was two weeks ago yeah All sorry, good two weeks ago. Ago. We, didn't have, we didn't podcast last weekend yeah that's right Remember that? you had some inspiration in Brisbane Red Hot. I uh, lost track. What, what were we talking uh, about? Inspiration in Brisbane. Inspiration in uh, Oh, working um, for an owner-operator yep. within their shop was yep. pretty cool to see that happen on a daily basis, see how um, Al Rennie's shop, mm. uh, that was a pretty big learning curve and inspiring to see. Um, Did that get you thinking at an early stage about your own place? Yeah. Or you're still thinking, Man, I just want to get to London and just fucking travel a bit or... Yeah, I suppose um, that vision was definitely there pretty early on and definitely seen how much the barbering industry was emerging. Uh, so there was there was actually a, a point in time there where I was like, do I want to go into business now? Which I'm glad I didn't because I was 24 at the time. Yep. Mm-hmm. Pretty ambitious thing to think you could <laughs> do, but um, that was definitely in the back of my mind at the time. Um, but London was calling. London was calling. Mm. My older brother moved over to London and I sort of seen how good a time he had traveling probably yeah. more than anything. But mm. then also being able to, like I said, elevate the career as well and get that What was experience. he doing over there? Oh, he, he went over and worked in fashion and then um, hospitality as well. I oh, see. So, so um, you picked the scissors, the comb up and popped on the airplane. Off I went, mate. Yeah, went did over you have there. Some, a, did you have a gig lined up already, or did you? I just, didn't. No, oh, I sort of had done a bit went. of research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just walked so in. Was, yeah, rocked up. Fuck. Yeah, it was um, on a working visa or a holiday. Working visa. Yeah. Oh so wow! So you didn't visa. have to have a job lined up already. No, nah, you just oh. you could. Uh, you had to have. It was like I can't remember exactly what it was, but you had to have a certain amount of coins. Saved. It was about five yeah. grand from memory. Five grand, yeah, yeah, just to be able to support yourself yep. for a few months for and a get a job. Yeah. That was probably it was pretty pretty easy visa to get really. Yeah. Um, just had to. I guess back then there wasn't too much. You know, like it wasn't COVID. that. Yeah, <laughs> the world was. Uh, yeah, the world was a bit a bit place. different. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what did you just walk into somewhere over there? Did you, were you following anywhere in yeah, London I specifically Instagram back then? Instagram wasn't really a thing then. No, it wouldn't have been. Um, I just used to jump on Google to be yeah. honest, and just Google London barbershops <laughs> and just stuff uh, frothing over places. Just just froth. How good's that look? Started yep. researching where I wanted to live. Yep. Sort of brainstormed it that way. And yeah, um, 
just went went over there. The worst case was you just come home. Or work in a bar. Or work <laughs> in a bar. Like every other exactly. and I'll see the guys. Yeah, I was over there. So I always was pretty confident. Yeah. Hence, like, I wouldn't have gone from the sunny coast. Definitely thought, and back then, after living in Brisbane for two years, I thought I was ready for a big global, you know, Experience. dynamic city. Yeah. I was like, I'm ready. I've lived in a city for a couple of years now. I know how to get around Brizzy. Yeah, got to London and definitely it was a bit of a different this fucking bigger. ballpark. But <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah. So. Did you just, how many gigs did you do over there? Just the one, dude. Yep. I was really lucky. I landed a pretty epic um, gig over there and stayed with him the whole time. I was actually um, thinking of staying and, and Making really sort of setting it up, but things didn't work out in the end. Um, but yeah, it was an epic couple of years. Uh, what Brams. were you doing? Where were you? So I was working for a barbering brand called Carter and Bond. And they were predominantly a um, online um, store for men's grooming products and lifestyle products. Mm. And then they were only just getting a footprint in physical barbering uh, presence. Yep. Um, so they had actually set up and collaborated with a high-end fashion store in Notting Hill. Wow, oh, wow. So they had a one chair. Yeah, it was pretty epic. It and that's your chair? That was your that chair? That was my chair, mate. So I just worked with a bunch of like guys from all different parts of the world really we had a guy from new york a couple of guys from england um other barbers. french guy no they were all like fashion yep. uh like stylists oh, and wow, yep. things like that so it was i was literally got this whole new avenue of like what hair was and how you could set things up from you know a business point of view but also have other inputs and other inputs yep. yeah like have a collective and yep so um, was it like a whole like they see you get a haircut and then they get styled by someone else type thing. Yeah. That's fucking well. sick. It's, it was pretty sick, dude. Like, I that's hadn't, I hadn't seen it in Brisbane. And then yeah. straight away, I was like, and that's hence why coming home, like, I came home because I knew I could start something here that had been done in Brisbane. Yeah. So mm. there was that, you know, decision whether to stay in London or come back home. Come back and Did you take the opportunity to straight travel around a bit while over there? Up. Yeah. Take the opportunity to travel a bit while you're over there. Yeah, yeah, you, it's it's pretty easy over there to travel. So mm. definitely yeah, could have done more. Got caught <laughs> up having too many benders in London and <laughs> having a good time. So did it? Did anyone cool come across your chair in that time? Yeah, yeah, I had a few um, pretty high profile people yep. come through. So some of which I didn't even know who they were. They're just sitting down. You're just chin wagging about. Yeah. Fucking Just what, having a chat. Can you please name drop? Because now I'm interested. Like I'm curious as fuck. Uh, so I had um, Paul Bettany. Was yeah, the, yeah. Big, the big one. Uh, he For those who don't know, he played star. Vision in the latest Avengers. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. Did you know who he was when he sat in the chair though? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I think I was. He's still, such an unassuming dude, though. Yeah, he, it was and, after the and fact. A great was guy, mate. Like, he would have been a so character. Humble. He was, mate. He was like, he was what really struck me cutting like a guy a guy of his profile's hair and and because he'd been in a few movies at that stage he was in heath ledger's night ta- a knight's tale Night Tale, wimbledon yeah um he would have just code. he would have just started Not doing the voice code. of fucking jarvis for the avengers yeah fuck what was his big one deja vu sorry he yeah was in. Mm. so this is um, a fucking a-list actor there yeah bro. yeah no it was um and he was so humble, dude. Like he, he, it was like I just wanted to ask him so many questions. I wanted the whole. Did you realize to be halfway here. through the cut who he was? I realized like like he was booked in for a couple of days. Yeah. So I seen his name and it didn't really. I didn't. He's like, it. oh, that's just another Paul Bettany. Yeah, and it was just lucky one of the guys that I work with said like Paul Bettany's coming in today, and then I started jumping on Google and working out, which I probably would have been better off without because I got a little bit like starstruck and nervous <laughs> oh, once shit. I knew who he was. So, but he was such a such a good dude. Like he. He kept on asking me questions about me, and I'm like, mate, mate. we're not talking about me. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm to, here for you, I'm right? here for you, mate. Like, you are, I want to know yeah, things. I, yeah, he's like telling me how he like flew down here for like one day. He had to fly to Melbourne for um, the premiere of um, Deja Vu. He literally came. He was here for like 24 hours from, well, he was living in New York at the time. And just so scooted was, back. Scooted back. Fucking hell. So, That's pretty weird. interesting dude to talk to. Yep. Didn't get to cut his hair twice. He was only there. I think he was actually filming at the time. The Avengers, they were filming in London. So, so. you could... Because um, mm. oh, he wasn't a face then. He was a character that was... Yeah, he was, yeah, he was just the voice oh, of Jarvis. I was going to say, your haircut would have been on the movie. Yeah. No, nah, he quite. only came in 2015. Shit. Had a face to it. Yeah, there you go, mate. I should have got the autograph. I fucking, if, I, future, if I knew in the future I was going to meet... Bro, I would have jizzed in my fucking pants. Yeah. Like, 
Your just yeah. mainly because of like this is off topic, but we're going down this rabbit hole now. Like the fact that Marvel knew what the plan was to bring him into an actual physical character and not just his voice blew my mind. Yeah. Fucking just oh my god! I'm so sorry we can't share this moment. I've actually never watched it. <laughs> so, do you, have you watched it? Avengers. Avengers. I've yeah. seen some Avengers. Yeah. yeah Not at go. the level of a man with tattoos yeah. of the movie. Oh, that's oh wow. Yeah, Brando. Um, wow. I, or the amount of times he's Mate. watched them. I've watched so many. So I've much. spent that's the whole day. Like I've spent a, a, a 24 hour period watching Endgame. I yeah. saw that movie eight times at the cinemas. Wow. And then that's... since then watched it probably another 20. Wow. I fucking love that show. I, like, I need to watch it. If yeah, it's good, bro. Yeah, I need what to get it. What the fuck? I can't believe you haven't watched it, dude. Yeah, no. It's a bit weird. I mean, you were obviously doing your, your benders over in London, so fair. Yeah, yeah, no, I was too busy cutting the hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jack, Who else did you meet? Who Jack else? Whitehall is probably the biggest profile I had in, or biggest uh, personality. Wow. Um, yeah, he's, 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 he's boomed a lot more now too, but even at the time, he was a pretty big deal around the street and again didn't know who he was so. really? nah. he's dropped. an english like co- uh comedian yeah. actor um he was absolutely uh, he was a client like yeah. he was paul he, bentley he'd come in a bit. Hair. jack yeah. whitehall was a client like, he actually came back he came in yeah a bit a fair bit yeah he used to tip really well as well did he uh, fuck that's good so i think it was about a 30 or 40 quid tip which is Damn. about 80 bucks Jesus. So they're tipping yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to yeah, so fuck. I, we need to might need to up our game here in yeah, Brizzy. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'd say it was it was a slap in the face getting back for sure <laughs> with no tipping. No tipping. Uh, so. The tip you get is our presence. No, I'm just it's true, Brendo, <laughs> and that's enough, bro. Sometimes I feel like you need to charge me after sitting in the chair, man. <laughs> so love you, love you too. <laughs> and were you living in near Notting Hill as well at the same Actually, time? Actually, I live. Uh, East London which was cool it was probably more fitting for who I was and where I was mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's a bit more grungy a bit more sort of um, yeah hip I guess and younger sort of crowd yep um, yeah I couldn't afford to live in Notting Hill that's for sure <laughs> yeah, fuck, scoot man. into Notting Hill as a professional and then scoot back out as yeah. a yeah I used to ride young. my bike over actually there was, oh, in the Treadley yeah it was always pretty interesting riding your bike through all the different parts of London how, how much it changes that's a fucking you know. that's an experience that's cool man it was cool man it, was, it, it, it taught me a lot about you know I suppose all different parts of London have their own little demographic and, yeah. and crowd one thing I personally like because I haven't travelled by myself or lived anywhere else other than Brisbane just through circumstances whatever Yeah. but it's like you talk to anyone who's done that and it's like it's a fucking challenge yeah like, it would have been a shock, you know, being... What were you, 24? 24, yeah. You know, 24-year-old, coming from Brisbane, parents what only live an hour away up the sunny coast. Yeah. They're going halfway around the world. Yeah, it was it was pretty wild. It was pretty, like, you you just kind of adapt, I guess. And Yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, was, it was there any big... points where you're like, nah, this ain't, this ain't for me, or I'm not cut out for this, or you just loved the whole experience? Yeah, when I rocked up for my interview, man, I was like, <laughs> fuck, I don't think I'm going to get a job. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was challenging. It was. It was probably something, yeah, I look back on now and realize probably how challenging it was. How much you actually got out of that. away from it, exactly. Yeah. But at the time, you just kind of head down. Get through it. Scissors through. Yeah. She scissors through? Yeah. I like the way you... Through, yeah. 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 You liked it? Yeah, Ducking I did. Through. What was the coolest place you traveled to while you were over there? Um, Any highlights? Other than the bars in London? There, yeah, like London. Your favorite bar in London. We didn't. I didn't get too far out of London because there was this one bar. <laughs> Mate, there was plenty of lost weekends. That's for sure. Um, now, learn how to work hard, play hard over there. That's for sure. The question hit me. Any overseas romance? Was there uh, one girl that, or some, or guy? You know, it's twenty twenty. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any girl that you were just like the one? Oh. Mate, one, I had a few. One. I had a few um, <laughs> romances over there for sure. I had a few fall in love with me because I'm swire. so good looking. <laughs> oh, mate, stop it! Um, no, that look. It's it, it. probably was. I was always knew I was only there for a short time. Yeah, a good time, not a long that. time. So I was pretty, pretty upfront. Yeah, with myself about that as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a couple of times where you thought, oh. Uh-oh. Do I stay? Uh-oh. Do I stay for various different reasons? Um, but yeah, obviously. Yeah. I just figured being that good looking and that accent over fucking London. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a good time. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was Humbly, good. <laughs> it was a good yeah. time. And um, so finishing up in London was 
was that the goal? As soon as you decided, hey, London's done. I'm Sorry, I've got, really, got a dead leg. <laughs> Bro, it's, yeah, I'm the same. Oh, I'm coming home to Brisbane and I'm opening Arco. Was that the 100% goal off the bat uh, straight away or you were yeah, still trying to work yourself out? The, yeah, there was a bit going on. There was a few moving pieces. Um, the visa, the second visa I had to get was a little bit more in depth. Mm. Um, it was and just to stay in London. To sorry. stay in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was no guarantees with it either. There was an application that can take, you know, months and months. I was living month to month. Uh, there was, you know, there was a lot to consider. Mm. Um, but working for, it was an emerging brand as well. It wasn't like they had been through that process to put Australians through that kind of uh, working visa before. So a lot of the emphasis came back on me to do the research. Mm. They were going to put me through it and they call it sponsor me uh, through it all. But um, I got sort of three, six months out and I just thought I'm better off like I was saying, having a, having a short, good time here, yep. really, you know, focusing on getting the most out of it for the now. And then mm. Australia's not exactly the worst place to no. come home to And either. when you come home, were you thinking, yeah, I'm going to open my own shop? Or was it, I'm going to yeah, come home? Yeah, I didn't know how I was going to yeah. do it. I had no money. Yep, no money. Uh, like Starts I was dream. starting, yeah, exactly. I was <laughs> that starting one bar from in London took all my money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was literally that, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, I can't even deny whatever. I, I went Fuck to New you, York. Brando. Yeah, yeah. You know me well. No, I went to uh, New York on the way home and spent three weeks there. And uh, that, that, that bar and finished it off. Any money I had left uh, stayed in New York. So, but then when I went to New York, I was like, "Fuck, maybe I can live in New York. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I could barbecue. Maybe this is it." Yeah. So, well, it's a, it's a transferable skill, isn't it? Yeah, you can cut like, a lot of hair around the world. Yeah, you got your scissors. Yeah, yep. got scissors can cut. Yep. Maybe a uh, comb. Yeah, would you think a comb's good? Point of the day. There's a lot of hair around the world. There is, and Johnny, mate, put that JBB. on your shirt. <laughs> you know, you saved in my phone as JBB. I like. Yes. It. Just when it pops up there, mate. Thank nice you, and short. Be bad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. 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 I, yep. I like that, mate. As simple as possible, please. So how'd you come up with Ryan Co? Uh, I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, the best. I think. Um, at the time, um, I knew, like, looking ahead with the long-term vision, I wanted to be at the top of my game, whether it be Australia-wide or, you know, even globally when you dream big. Mm. Um, putting your name on something is a good way to get your name out there, isn't it? So, 100%. Uh, made a lot of sense. But it's also simple. Simple. Mm. It's effective. And, like, when you look at it and if... If you're in Brisbane and you don't go see Ryan and co after this, don't bother listening to the next episode. Kidding. Please listen to us and sponsor us. Mm. But <laughs> Get around. And 10% off for any new clients as well while I'm thinking of it. Oh, oh there that, we that, go. That mentioned the podcast, of course. Or just, Which is everyone. Or so just you're now just going to be... Brando or JBB. <laughs> JBB. <laughs> yeah. Um, whatever. Okay, exclusive. Absolutely. So like you, your whole brand is... You can see it. it you would think it's global. Yeah, it's. I, I've you definitely. You can see what you got shop anywhere. Yeah, you could like you. That's a transferable. I don't know. I don't know if as you said before, you couldn't think of anything else. But you look at that brand it's in itself. It's like fuck. This is this is going to be something. Yeah. And like yeah, obviously, is- obviously you got Stacey and Sean with you now, who all add their own flair to to what Ryan and Co is, and it's fucking vibe when you go in there. Mm-hmm. I feel so uncomfortable that I just said it's a fucking vibe. It's a vibe. It is a vibe. I'm not. I am not hip enough to say it's a fucking vibe. I think it rolled off the tongue pretty well, mate. Things, I don't, I just don't know there wasn't enough right. eye contact, though, mate. There's, I don't know how I feel vibe. right now. I'm gonna have a. Shrimp. But you know what? It's, it's not probably the first time he's used it. Then yeah. it's legitimately the first time I've used <laughs> it. And it, it. It rolled off. He's pretty practiced smooth, it. Right? I'm gonna go I'm look gonna at myself there, for a long time in the mirror today. <laughs> yeah. it's like what? Do we have a vibe. Is this a vibe? Is this a vibe? What What do you mean by vibe, Brendo? Apparently, it's like it's a mood. It's a mood. Which is like... Is it a mood or a move? Mood. Mood. Not yeah, mood. like, it's like a, a, a good thing. Like, yeah, I feel that. I feel that vibe. I feel it. I have to you say... You know what I like, and I, I never, I've never said it because I just don't feel cool enough to say it either, but I work, I've worked with a photographer a fair bit of late, and he's a cool fucking dude. Yeah. And it, he takes a photo, and he says, yeah, I fuck with that one. Wow. Really? And it's just strong. It's that, cool. is a, that is a strong it's shape. Strong. You do, it it kind of makes that's, you, you that's really look at... That's a good photo, right? Yeah, that's that's I fuck with that one. I fuck with that. 
I fuck with yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That is but I, I just, I, I, I don't feel cool enough to say it. I don't but, feel like. So I, you cut my hair as you're spinning me around with the mirror. You just say, I fuck with I that. I fuck with that, yeah. Like, I fuck with that. All right. Damn. Yeah. Oh, mate. I don't say know. That next, can we cut and can you say go that again? To me next time? No, I, oh, do you want me to say it again? <laughs> I so, fuck with that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But like, it's just, I, so I'm going to give a shout out to my dietitian, Leah. She's my like translator for all these sayings. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is a vibe? I just don't feel comfortable ever saying it. You've said it. I know, and I he don't said feel it. right. Mm. It rolled. Wasn't oh. the first. He's definitely practiced it, and I reckon he'll do it again. He'll do it again. I'm so scared to do it again, though. Because <laughs> you know what? I will do it again. Yeah, you will. You will, mate. You'll be anyway. Right. It's, it, it rolled well. I, I, I don't it. like it. I it feel nice. Anywho, back to you. What was it like opening Arco for the first time? Pretty overwhelming. Mm. Yeah, but... Freaking out? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Still am. <laughs> <laughs> That's the it's, thing as a business owner, isn't yeah. it? It's, it? But... I think that I level it. of fear as a business owner is healthy, though. For sure. Oh, yeah. You, if it's extreme panic, I can't open the door because yeah. of anxiety. Yeah. Probably Don't if you're it. not on the yeah, edge yeah. a little bit, like, you're going to get too comfy and shit's going to end up bad before yeah. you realize. You've got to live your yeah. life on that, like, little bit of, oh, I need, you know. That, it's survival, it's, isn't it? It's it, that hunger. Yeah. It's that, it keeps like, you going. And it, it pushes you as well to continue to get, be better, you know. Like, mm. I think that complacency of feeling comfortable, I don't know what it's like because I haven't felt comfortable for a while. Like, in, as in... What's comfortable? Yeah. We, we do a sport Sounds where we're boring. constantly uncomfortable. Yeah. Sounds boring. I'm in so much pain right now. Get, <laughs> I think get comfortable, being uncomfortable has been where I've been able to um, keep so, pushing myself. And yep. Yeah. Because there's uh, a lot of, obviously, upskilling and do things... Like, I don't know anything about your industry, but is it forever changing? Like, I know for us, it's... There's something yeah, new every fucking week. Like, yeah. is it... You'd be cutting differently to what you used to, right? Yeah, for sure, sure man. It evolves and changes really quickly, so... Uh, yeah, and that's something, you know, both now, like I'm probably in a sweet spot with my business in terms of You've got just open a brand new shop. It's, mm-hmm. you know, we're doing really well. We've got to, including myself, some of the best stylists working there in Brizzy. Like things are going really well now, but you've really got to keep your finger on the pulse with that. Mm-hmm. We're probably the most, you know, the newest, best barbershop going around Brisbane at the yeah, moment. The best but, in general. But, there's, but there's, if there's you don't... another one coming through. Oh, that exactly, mate. And the creative industry changes and evolves so you've really got to be able to do that that's mm. something i've already noted for medium to long term to yep. keep your finger on the pulse and evolve yeah. don't just sit back and like that easy um what's that statement like it's it's the, the hungry lion climbing up the line it's, it's it's easy to fall off the top once you're at the top yeah for sure there's 100%. a line in there somewhere i think as well rattling around i wasn't yeah. sure where you're I think the line's about. coming i know what you there's mean there's a hungry tiger coming up and the are you the, talking about the, like a motivation full, monday quote with the lion top. And then Can he you? falls off and then Who the next talking? tiger comes in and then Ryan Co wins. Yeah. yeah lions. Tiger. Yeah, lions. No, just lions or tigers. Wrestle. Like, yeah, you wrestle. Mate, just cats and big things. Yeah, something's happening up there. Yeah. I'm not sure what just happened. Yeah. But it, where, it where, happened. where are you looking it for happened. your hungry tigers? Like your, your inspiration. Mate, hungry tigers? In, in the wrong places, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, need, I need to work out where they are. Um, you forgot the question, didn't you? What was the question, sorry, Brenda? <laughs> Hungry, hungry tigers. I'm still. Th- oh, sorry. Hungry baby tigers, bro. Hungry tiger. Where do I? Where do I find your no, hungry so tigers? No, so where do you look for inspiration? Yeah. Is the gist of that. Where do I look for inspiration? Yeah. Um, that was the fucking best ever moment on our podcast. Yeah. That was that was deep. Yeah. No, because you literally just forgot what he got. <laughs> Blank, mate. Hungry. Tiger, Next question. Tiger, yeah. Tiger, <laughs> hungry. Yeah. Where, where where are you looking for your hungry tigers, bro? My hungry tigers. To be honest, like again, probably going back to. I think we touched on it earlier, but even just being here now with you boys doing a podcast, it's pretty inspiring, you know, seeing you guys push boundaries. Uh, Mm. Pretty lucky. Got an amazing clientele that I talk to, Mm. you know, 10, 12 different fairly successful people Mm. a lot of the time throughout the day. Um, I like that you have inspirations outside of your own industry though. Like I know it's a fucking vibe twice in one episode that when I come in and we get to talk about like, it's not, oh, you know, similar struggles of running your own business. Yeah. And it's like good to bounce ideas off and talk about how, you know, you get, uh, how you work around it, your challenges. Yeah. And like, it's a fucking, it's, it's a pretty, vibe. It's, it's a vibe. Three times. Three times. Can we, like, can you put that on the top of the It's going to be the title yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a fucking yeah. vibe. It's a vibe with hungry tigers. <laughs> and beers. And beers. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even get the hungry. Do you get it? No, there's the, 
Do you left to watch it? I'm Can still, you please send I'm it? So, I'm stumped. Yeah, I'm stumped <laughs> too. I'm so I'll, draw you, um, I'll draw you a picture. There's only there's four people in this building right now, including all the audience. There's yeah. uh, there's more. Well, there's a big audience. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey guys. Yeah. yeah guys. We can't turn the camera around. It's fixed. It's yeah. Fixed. You guys said it was just going to be us. Yeah. Said sorry. it was going to yeah. be a lot more intimate, but this is crazy. Thanks for coming. But yeah. Yeah. Out of the four, you know, of, the, of creating this episode, yes. Three of us don't understand what the fuck you're talking about with these tigers, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I'll we'll run it down this one. <laughs> Later. Oh, <laughs> I have no idea. Is there a tiger? Is a tiger gonna come out? Of, like, um, well, we'll get you a tiger. Well, you want a tiger? We'll get a tiger. Yeah, man. Johnny probably could. He knows a guy. Yeah. Johnny knows a guy. That Johnny, is tr- Johnny, Johnny knows, knows a, guy. a guy. He knows a guy. Yeah, or if yeah, he yeah. doesn't, he knows a he guy knows who a knows guy. a guy. Yeah. That's yeah. what I've, I picked that up pretty quickly. Jo- and Johnny is the king. Do you uh, want a good knows a guy story? This is a little non Ryan Co related, but it's good. Would you like it? Yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. So, so me and Jamie were chatting the other day, a little offline, about the deadlift comp coming up. And Jamie says, we should do wood chop at our deadlift comp. And I said, that is a fucking great idea. I know a guy. There we go. Yeah. But anyway, so anyway, training client, they know a guy. So oh, we're going to look into some wood chop at this deadlift comp. That's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. At the circus. Yeah, at the fucking circus. It's an actual event thing now. Yeah. That's yeah, good. it's going to be fucking silly. Sounds wild. So what, who's your favourite client, bro? Like, not as in person. Like someone who comes in and Who's just says, says, hey, fuck yeah, this is what I want. Or do you love getting people who just sit in that chair and just say, you, you're, you're the dude. You just fucking make it a thing. A good mix of it all, mate, yep. is probably pretty good. Yep. Um, and if you got the same thing every day, it'd be a bit boring, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, variety. Is Can you just spice. look at a head and just go, fuck, this is what it needs? Yeah. Most of the time. That's fine. I, this well, this I, needs a mullet, doesn't it? Most of, yeah. It's coming in. It's getting longer. Oh, I remember the, our first appointment. I was like, just do what you want. And now you know me. I think I just stroked your hair for half an hour that day, mate. Right, it's <laughs> not so good. Like, and that's what it needed. Yeah, that's all it needed. <laughs> he knows. Maybe a little cheeky shoulder rub on the yeah. way out as well. Yeah. Still waiting for that. That'd be great. You don't get one? No, he does. He, as he brushes all the beard away. <laughs> Sorry, I just catched that man's face at me. <laughs> and he's just like... He's like, what the fuck? I want one. It's the best haircut you'll ever get. But what's next for Ryan and Co? What are you, are you working on anything in the background? Are you gonna like? Is there? Do you have a vision of products, your own stuff? Yeah, I suppose um, I've I've dabbled in the the fashion industry of late a little bit. So probably down the track, there's that scope for introducing more than just barbering products or yeah, bringing that bit more of a lifestyle. Okay, fashion way, potentially, way. mate. Yeah, <sighs> down the track, maybe some aftershave. <clears throat> Just um, if you so. ever do pants, just remember the more athletic individuals like us yep. require the more space lifters. in the, leg um, in the, the legs. Athletic. Big just legs. on that too, I feel yeah. really massive sitting between you two boys today. <laughs> uh, like this is an XL shirt too. So yeah, just, yeah, we know. Yeah, and you yeah. fill it out well. Double yeah. X. <laughs> yeah, no. Squats, man. Always yep. squatting, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I walk into this gym, I go off into the the bros zone just to try to get a pump on it bro zone <laughs> b- behind the fucking stairs where he <laughs> hopes I can't see and uh, Johnny's just at me about legs <laughs> rightly so as well <laughs> get can on. you fucking train him and you've done some powerlifting too bro yeah I've dabbled yeah, yeah you, you put the toe in the water yeah how would you enjoy that yeah it was good it was good mate it was um, yeah definitely an experience mm. um, after coming through like doing a lot of gym work over the years it's always just been probably more for aesthetic than anything else. Um, playing a bit of footy growing up, there's definitely some strength work in there. But yeah, it's, it's been cool to, mm. to sort of get a bit of an insight into it. Um, comp days, pretty cool. Yep, it's different. More so even just from a spectator point of view, mm. like it's something you could definitely go get around, hence the culture you're bringing around with yep. it as well, with being able to go and have a beer and watch it. like. Mm. I think um, that's just as cool as competing as well. Yeah. The vibe that... The vibe. The vibe. It, it's, it's a vibe, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a fucking a vibe, vibe, baby. <laughs> it's a vibe. There you go. I just started something. that Somebody else already started, but yeah. I have brought well, into this. Well, you've said it enough times that I think it's yours now. <sighs> it's not. It Jason's vibe. just shaking his head. Yeah. He's like... <laughs> it's a vibe thanks to Brandon Greco. And Jason's like, Greco's. you guys need to go to bed. Would you ever expand Ryan Cohen to multiple shops, bro? Uh, I think that's a, a when, not if. Yep. I think. Fuck um, yeah. I mean, Noosa baby, Noosa. Let's go to Noosa. Save me a space. Yeah, yeah I got your room, Noosa barbell. Noosa barbell. Yep. Save me a corner. Yep, I got a corner for you. Yep. 
I'll actually I'm up there this week, next week, mate. So I'll scope Did a you few. some spots out. Scope <laughs> some spots out. Yeah, long term dream. Some will call it a cult. Others mate, will call it a dream. <laughs> I'm fucking done. Hotel California, mate. Fucking isn't it just? <laughs> mate, Pete's one of the most unique dudes I've ever had a conversation with. Just on that as well. What yeah. a legend. Which Pete? I mean Pete. Bass, basketball. Basketball. Oh, triad Pete. Yeah, triad Pete. That's yeah. He's a good leader yeah. of the triad. Mate, ever since stepping foot in your gym, it's just been like the diversity of your clientele. It's so cool. Like, and sitting there, I think I was either warming up or had just been flogged by you, and it was cooling down. But Pete came in and said, "Oh, you I haven't seen you around here before. First time here." I was like, oh, "Pretty well, mate." See, that's like, how he gets you. Yeah. You think he's nice from the start. Yeah. And then next time you, you yeah. know you fuck up, he'll be at you. He's at you. He's a savage. He's around. He is a savage. Yeah. He calls Those people cars. out. Yeah, happily. I fucking love it. And he's very it. subtle about it. <laughs> and you don't know if he's actually called you out or given you a compliment. But what he actually has done is called you out and called you shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's sneaky. Sneaky Pete. Yeah. yeah. That's, a new, that's his new name. But he likes to call this place Hotel California. <laughs> I love it, mate. I, th- I thought that was hilarious. Once you, once you come in here, you won't leave. I was like... Here I am, three, I think, good three years later. It's the longest I've been a member at a gym for, so. Fuck yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. 100% part of the crew now, bro. You're part of the furniture. It's good. We just get to, need to get you in another powerlifting call. Career's not Maybe. over Maybe. Yeah, it's not over yet. I think I'm a spectator. No, you're not. With the beer. With the beers. Look, you, uh, you, yeah, actually, no. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon you, you could do that job well. I think I lost my confidence that day. I um, We had a bit did, of a hiccup. Uh, Three failed squats. <laughs> I know, I had dark, to ref that. That was a dark place. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was hard to give you that red. Nothing that we yeah. did in training. I had a, <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Had something to do with the crowd, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe Brando's face is staring you down. Yeah, something happened anyway. Yeah. And it wasn't squatting. It was really hard to give you a red. Yeah, no, that was... My heart wanted you to get it. That was a, that was a dark place, Brando. <laughs> and you know what? You're here now. Yep. You came out of it. Get yeah. back on that horse. Yeah. It's a fucking vibe, bro. You get redemption on the deadlift, at least, in a powerlifting combo. You pulled a good so. daddy, I think, from memory. Yeah. I had PJ screaming at me in the back yeah. corner there. You fucking got Don't it pulled then. Yeah. Don't you fucking knock your ears up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit. If Mate, PJ's you around me. you, you will never fail. No. Nah. All, All right. right. This Are you is, ready for this? I'm not only looking forward to your answer to this question... But I'm also looking forward to just your body language and just how you react to it. Um, I'm going to give you 30 seconds and you can say anything you like to the world starting now. Say anything to the world. Anything to the world. You're the president Five right seconds. now. Guys, it's been good. 10 seconds. The, the podcast here, it uh, throws anything at you, but... It's a fucking vibe. 15 it's seconds. Do you still um, have more so seconds? So to the world... 10 seconds. Fuck. <laughs> this is more anxiety That's, than when he began. Yeah. You have five Just, more um, seconds. Get a haircut at Ryan Three. <laughs> Ten percent off. And podcast awesomes. Two. Uh. <laughs> awesomes. <laughs> oh, that's wow. the best. Thanks, What's Johnny. the um, strangest thing you have or do or think about? What's the strangest thing I have? Own. Think about or do. He taps his bell button. You tap your belly button? Yeah, you want to see it? Yeah, sure. That, I can hear it. There it is. I That's some sweet. How often do you do that? Oh, if I'm like laying on the is couch. Is that a da- daily ritual? If I'm laying on the couch just doing something, I just find myself doing that. It's weird, I know. But it's happy place. You'll get it. You'll get it. Maybe Maybe you got to like... You have the coast for a week or so on a holiday. No, no, no. Maybe. Just, yeah, like, yeah. just arch Solid. a little bit. Quiet time. Got to sit up a bit. Sit up a bit, give yourself some space, and then just get it. No, you got to hit the hole, bro. It's like a percussion instrument. I'm going to work on that, Brando. Yeah. Next time I see Send you, vids, yeah. That's officially now the weirdest thing I do. <laughs> uh, it is. Do you know how many people, when I did that, sent me videos of them doing it? I do it too. I'm not alone. <laughs> what is the most important quality in a human? That's deep. Um, <laughs> yeah, considering everything else we're talking about today. <laughs> um, respect. Mm. What made-up word would you like to see enter the English language? Is a vibe. Is a vibe. vibe. Or one word, baby. Fuck yeah. What's your first memory? Um, 
the sky. Cool. Okay. Yep. How do you feel about wombats? Wombats? I've never come across one, but it's a native. Yeah. That's, That's pretty cool. cool. That's it's good. a... Yeah. What'd you say? Native? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's a good thing. Don't look at me like that, mate. What? I just didn't hear you, sorry. Oh. <laughs> You're like... Oh, fuck. Oh, fucking... <laughs> What's something you learned last week? Last week? Um... I don't know, always learning, mate, but... So what did you learn when you were always learning? <laughs> he really caught know. you out there. You <laughs> walked into that. Um, next question. <laughs> That's a good line to say. What's yeah. your perfect it sat- is what it is. What's your perfect Saturday Arvo slash night? Uh, rainy Saturday afternoon spent with Johnny B. Bad and Brendo from the Platform Podcast, oh, drinking mate. beers, yeah. talking shit. Do you believe in ghosts? Yes. Ghost yeah, story? Fuck. Nah, no, we don't need to do this again. <laughs> yeah, we do. Man, I've I've got ghosts, man, in my life for sure. I've, yeah, they follow I've, you around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghosts exist for sure. What do you mean? Like you have ghosts in your life? You guys seen the haunt? Uh, the hauntings of the Hill House? No, nope. I think so. It's on Netflix. If you haven't don't, watched no. it and you want to get nope. scared, yeah. no. Uh, it's fucking scary. Yeah, no. But I was sitting there watching episode whatever it was, and there was this dark moment where there was like they were at a funeral and there was a dead body in the coffin uh-huh. and me. as it dropped yeah. I swear I shit you not the back of the couch where I was sitting the wall got like it was like someone fell into the wall it banged so hard behind me as Get the fucked. yeah yeah Andy, what did you do then? then I, I wanted Whoa. to like I was shitting myself I was like I'm what could that possibly be? it was mate I'm shitting myself I'm, fuck yeah. that it was cooked mate and watch hauntings of no like, did you watch any more episodes after this event? yeah in the daylight, though, I literally had to watch it while it Did was. You sleep? The sun was up. No, man, I was like, lucky. Lucky, I had my ex girlfriend and like girlfriend at the time was yeah, there, so I wasn't hugs, just losing night. my shit. She <laughs> actually. Jace, heard it. you're in. I'm out. Get in here, mate. <laughs> Saving <me>, us. Fuck. <laughs> How to make 110 kilo, man? <laughs> Fucking run swim. out of the room. <laughs> Fucking hate that you're shit. Big Brando. Yes. Thank you. Yes. But I'm gonna tell you the best ghost. Oh, story, I'm man. not listening. What is um, the last words you're gonna say before you die? Au revoir. Ooh, Peace out. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a fucking vibe, bro. It's a vibe. Or one word, Brando. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe. <laughs> Mate, thank you for your time this afternoon and that horrible ghost story. Um, for people who want to reach out, find out more about what you do, or get the best haircut in Brisbane, where can they find you? Uh, nine. Nine? Fuck, I don't even know where my shop is. Two, 850 Ann Street, Fortitude mm-hmm. Valley. Uh, jump on ryancobarbershop.com.au. Yep. Instagram. Yep. Sweet, we'll put Talk it all up in the show notes, man. Rad. Thanks for having me, guys. No, oh, man, thank Pleasure. you. It, it's been a fucking vibe, and it's I can't wait to get my next cut. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be Hungry waiting. Talk. Throw the lines in there. <laughs>